Uh, hey there guys, we are looking at the solution to this apple harvest problem. Um, it's about um, fencing in a region that's based on these constraints they're called. If you notice they're A, B, C, D, all the way up to E are constraints and so we've kind of broken them down into parts. First and most important you want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. I suggested that you go alphabetically. G comes before M so we're calling our X variable the number of Gala op apples we're purchasing and Y is the number of Macintosh apples purchased. You really want to be clear that we're talking about the numbers of things in case there's a value. Uh, sometimes we'll talk about something having a certain price and then we'll multiply by um, how much it's worth to get a total value. But in this case, it's just the number of those things. All right, so it says write an inequality to model the maximum number of bushels of Macintosh apples, okay? So up here it says in the first part that the orchard has only a total of 400 bushels of max on hand. So that just means you gotta keep your Y's, that's the max, the Y's have to be less than 400. It's confusing to some because there's no X involved, but it says nothing about the number of galas, so it's just Y. But here it's saying in B, write an inequality to model the minimum total number of bushels. Okay, so total is a combination of X and Y, and that's got to be more than 200. So a minimum of something means that that's the smallest amount, so X plus Y must be greater than that. Okay, conversely, it says the maximum up here in part C is that um, 600 by, you know, it's maybe it's the machinery or the amount of labor you've got or whatever, but 600 is the maximum. So the same thing, only the inequality goes the other way. All right? So finally, or not finally, at part D it says write an inequality to model the minimum number of max relative to galas. Okay, well there are two things. If there are more max than galas um, in the recipe, which you're told up here in this part that the recipe um, requires that there are more max than galas. So if that's true, then you've got to say y is greater than x. All right? And then part E here says, well, you want to have y be greater, but they've got to be less, fewer than twice as many. You can't go whole hog and only have there be max. All right? So you. Um, there must be fewer than twice as many max as galas. So if there are more max, you got to double the smaller one in order to be equal to the max, right? Think about a little example that if you've got um, 10 bushels of galas, you can go up to but not beyond 12, or sorry, if there are 10 bushels of galas, up to but not beyond 20 bushels of max. So 10 times 2 is 20, and you've got to be less than or equal to that. Maybe in this case it should be strictly less than because of the wording, but we're not going to quibble over whether it's a dotted or solid line. All right, it's the shading to one side or the other that's important. It says graph the above inequalities using the intercept method and the slope intercept method on the axes below. All right, and then it says shade in the region in your graph that represent the possible blends the owner can use. And then there's a couple of questions to be answered. Well, I'm going to jump to our GeoGebra. Um, graphing um, axes. This is an application that you guys are going to down, not download, even just use it as a web application. It's awesome, it's free, it's very easy to use. It looks like this. You get these tools across the top and you get this axes. You can click on right here and I'm going to plot some points. You'll see I've done two of these already to save time. This is the line that you'll get when you graph the maximum number of apples. That's um, 0, 0600, that point. And this point down here is 600, 0. So we're going to shade in the less than direction. That's over here. This one is the line that goes to 200. This is um, our minimum amount. And I've got that by finding those two points at our intercepts, 200, 0, and 0, 200. Again, just like in our earlier worksheets. So if you're a little bit fuzzy on that, you want to go back and review that. And then we're shading in the greater than direction here. Okay. So now we have the equation, um, or the inequality rather, that is, um, let's do this one first, that y is greater than x. Well, that's a very simple one. If x is 0, then y is 0. And if x is 2, then y is 2. And if x is 100, y is 100. We're going to graph the y equals x line. So I'm just going to plot two series simple points. Um, as soon as you hit the parentheses, it gives you both. And I'm just going to do 0, 
comma zero and hit enter and you'll see that we get a point right there at the origin and then I'll do let's do say um, 400 comma 400 because that'll give us a point that's nice and easy to see and out right here and uh, I'm gonna connect those two by going to this segment tool and then clicking on this point and this point and that's now our line. I don't know, need to go beyond it because I know I'm already shading in between here. All right. Um, now, which side do I shade? Well, if we go back and take a look at that, you see here clearly the Y is greater than the X. So I'm going to be shading above that amount. All right. I'll be shading above that line. So now I'm in this region up here only. Okay. Well, we have a final constraint not to bounce back and forth too much, but it's this one, y is going to be less than twice x. So again, if I plug in 0 for x, I'll get 0 for y. If I plug in a simple point like uh, 10 for x, I'll get 20 for y. If you want to think about this simply in terms of slope-intercept form, as we could have done here, the slope in the earlier equation is 1, here the slope is 2. All right, so I'm going to go if, if x is 100, y will be 200 for my point. And then I'm going to shade below it because y is less than that amount. All right. So I go to plot that point again. Um, well, I don't need to plot 0, 0 because it's already there. But I know if I plot, um, I'll go actually to 200, uh, let's see, go 300, 600. So 300 for my x, and then 600 will be the result, oops, not 6,000, 600, and I get this point up here, all right? That's, um, I could have done a point much closer, and then I could have chosen up here to do a ray, and if I pick this point first, and even if I do a smaller point in, it'll continue the ray well beyond, and I'm at, um, and I'll go through that point. So now my region that I'm allowed to um, press my apples within is bounded by this shape right here. And I'm going to click around it and shade it in. And this is what we call our feasible region. According to the rules above, I can only um, make apples, my cider mix, with uh, points x and y that are on or within this region right here. Okay. So then the question is, going back to this, is shade in the region and then say is it possible to press 200 bushels of max that's the y value and 220 bushels of galas 220x 250y I wish I'd reverse those but nevertheless that's the way it is let's see if 220 comma 250 is in there so I just go to plot that point um, 220 comma Oops, 22. I did 220, comma, 250. And hit enter. And that point is inside that region, so I can make cider according to that blend. Let's see what the last one is. How about um, the other way around? 220, uh, let's see, 250 galas and 220 max. So reverse those digits. And if I do that, two fifty, comma, two twenty, and hit, and that one is just outside. So you can see, this is an easy way of determining what blends I'm allowed to produce um, within my constraints. There you go.